It'll be a very, um, it'll be a very constricted process, but depending only on that reporting. So let me give you just one or two examples of what happens. What happens when the, the global targets get translated into indicators by an expert group? Here, here's a very powerful first target, SDG 4.1. Look at it. Very powerful adjectives. The, all, everybody, all boys and girls, complete free, equitable, quality, relevant, effective. So five descriptors at least. And what does that get changed into? Just look at it. Just a proportion and just a minimum proficiency uh, in two subjects, reading and maths. That's it. So what happens? The other terms are dropped. It's free is not there, relevant is not there, effective. Quality just becomes that, that descriptor, minimum <coughs> proficiency. Now, those of you who are looking at the public and the private in education more generally, including in Tibet, will know that there's a really quite a widespread concern about the rise, the increasing privatization of education. Not just in America, but in Africa and in South Asia, in Pravina's country, India, massive uh, movement of private private schooling. So, maybe not important, but dropping the word free from the, global from the global indicator, it's an interesting time for that to be happening. Uh, I'll give you one more example, just to, to put this on the table. Um, TVET was a, was a victim in the MDG process and in the Dakar when, when the Dakar World Forum had six education for all girls. The people who were there didn't fully really understand TVET, and so TVET was simply called, as some of you will remember, you remember what it was called? It was called Life Skills. Life Skills. Huh? Life Skills. That's right. And, and well, I know what whether you use the term life skills much, I, I very seldom use the term, but it's sort of the kind of term you use for knowledge about how to, how to, how to open your mobile phone, um, how, how to call the doctor, you know, it's life skills. Um, and it comes as much of, as anywhere out of health. health uh, uh, but you know, as a way of talking about quality technical vocational education, it, it was a, no, a no non-starter. So what was, what was good about the SDG process is those, those 10 targets in SDG 4, the words technical and vocational, not a skill, because skill could be a you know, soft skill, it could be, doesn't need to be a technical skill. But, sk but technical and vocational skills were used in three, if not four, of the, of the 10 targets. And the word quality was attached to them. And they went on to discuss their, well, not just having life skills sitting by itself, but discuss their relationship with employment, with decent jobs, and entrepreneurship. So there, there was no question that skill was seen to be relevant to work, and to relevant work, and to decent jobs, and, and, and to some dimension of quality. But what happens? If you look at the global target produced by our experts, there it is. Proportion of young people with ICT skills. Well, a lot of young people have ICT skills, don't they? I mean, they have uh, capacity uh, to share a family meal with everybody looking at their smartphones. Um, to be sending text messages and so on. But ICT skills is a pretty narrow interpretation of, 
firm of technical and vocational, quality technical and vocational education. When you think of the, the qualities that are going to be needed to construct these extraordinary projects that have been anticipated in the Belt and Road Initiative, these are not ICT skills uh, only. Um, of course, you need ICT skills if you're going to do cyber uh, warfare, I guess. But the, um, I mean, the, the the way that that aspiration and you know the people who, people who you know in this department, people who involve the technical vocational education, they too fought to get these terms actually used: technical, vocational, quality, and their relevance to work and to jobs into the text, just as people fought very hard, uh, not just the international agencies, so-called, but international NGOs, national NGOs, fought to get the word free into, into the sustainable development. So, so that's a, that's a, that's a, a minimizing of the aspiration and of the ambition, because as you know, the SDG 4 is an extraordinarily ambitious set of targets. I mean, it, it arguably is far too ambitious. If, and, and it's, um, in, if you just look at it, promising access for all to higher education, to technical educational education, completion of um, secondary, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, early childhood education. It's before you even get to the complicated um, target 4.7, which we'll, we might come on to in a moment. Um, so, you know, technical vocational quality education becomes just participation in formal and non-formal education in the last 12 months. These may seem to be unimportant, but if that's what is going to be reported into the annual process going into the UN Statistical Commission and being, what, what is it, what's it going to say about what's happening in Uganda or in Pakistan or in India or in Scotland? What's it, what's it going to be saying about that? The, um, so the ambitions therefore get changed, don't they? Um, these minima, these fixed proficiency get substituted for relevance and quality um, in all the different areas. And reading and maths um, is what's left, despite the extraordinary range of what is anticipated in 4.7 when we're talking about education for sustainable development, global citizenship education, peace education, human rights education. Look at 4.7. By the way, one of the UNESCO centers has produced a very useful little book which you could actually have in your pocket if you were ever going to specialize on talking about the SDGs. It's one page for each SDG. There they are, um, SDG 4, quality education. The whole ten and one, and it's quite a nice. It's it's a very handy little book. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but that's a UNESCO product. One of the more valuable ones that I've seen, actually. <laughs> Short, pocket size, and if you can't remember what the hell SDG three was, I can help. <coughs> health or five, uh, gender, or what the really difficult ones are, like seventeen. Then that's a very useful little little. So if, it doesn't matter what your interest is. If it was a, if you were part of the teacher education community, you would have followed how, at one point, it looked like we were going to have all teachers to be qualified, fully qualified, as as it went through its different stages. They as we got nearer and nearer to a final text. But when you got the final text. That's what you got on teachers. Minimum 
organized teacher training. The great teacher unions, the inter international education, for example, as a body, or education international, they fought, of course, over two or three years to get uh, an aspiration for all teachers to be fully qualified. And you end up with minimum. The strange thing is, if, you're, if you look more carefully at this, and I can send you the more detailed paper, is that even of these 10, 11, 11 indicators, even the UN Statistical Commission has not yet judged that they're at a sufficiently rigorous level for them in terms of methodology and availability and, in Marx's terms, complexity, conceptually clear enough, only a few of them have actually reached that level. So here we are embarking on a show and people have statistical officers will be sending in this information this year for the SDG annual report. Um, so these are going to get signed off finally, I think, by the UN General Assembly, but they're they will have to continue to be reviewed uh, over these next uh, five and ten years. So this global process turns out to be very, very complex. Um, these, these goals are all meant to be integrated and indivisible. If, if you read the, the overview document produced by the UN, um, you will also note, if you've looked at carefully at education or even dipped into the Global Education Monitoring Report of UNESCO. Has anybody been able to do that? The one, I'm sure there's two or three people here at least have done that. You'll see that, unlike the older Global Education Monitoring Reports, from, from last year, they, they decided, if you look at the 2016 Global Education Monitoring Report, they don't not only look at what's happening and report on those 10 targets, but many other goals are linked to education. And so you have, a, you have quite a complicated process going on in the Global Education Monitoring Report of this body analyzing how the goal of education is being delivered not only within education and its targets, but also in relationship to health or to environment or to uh, and other dimensions of sustainable development. So what was a relatively simple process <coughs> when you were, when the Global, Global Monitoring Report was looking at the Dakar goal one by one, has become, if you look at the Global Education Monitoring Report last year, we'll see what a complex exercise is, in, is involved. So on the one hand, you've got UNESCO taking the, this process very seriously and looking at the sheer complexity of reporting and monitoring on what the SDG, uh, SDGs have produced for education in all its different dimensions. And it's, relationship to other uh, goals. And then you have this much narrower process going on that I've just described. Um, you, you have an example there of how SDG 4 is really a little different from SDG 8. Um, just the difficulty of looking at how participation in the labor market as an educated or skilled person gets analyzed in the indicator terms. Um, as if that isn't sufficiently difficult, the, we then have spent over just a couple of minutes looking at what is the governance architecture that has been put together to review what we've just been talking about. And as, as ever, there is a series of, if you like, competitive um, demands to be involved in this very process that has been constructed. So you've got a global process, 
And then you've got a global architecture to analyze the process. These are just a handful of the organizations that, as you see, have been set up in the last, um, in the last year. A global alliance to monitor learning. Interagency groups on education and equality. Um, technical cooperation book, uh, groups. Learning metric partnerships. I mean, if you looked at this, you begin to think, hey, wait a minute. This, this process of simply getting the world to agree to this set of goals and targets has become, even in one area, education, has become really complicated. <coughs> and there's a kind of ownership dimension going on. Who actually owns this process? And what is the, to what extent are individual countries concerned to engage with it? I mean, who's on these global alliances? Who's on the assessment for learning? Or who's doing the learning assessment capacity index, which will judge whether you have 